Hello everyone and welcome to today's video where we'll take a look at how to create and plot named expressions using the fields calculator in Maxwell. In the last videos we used the magnetostatic solver to visualize magnetic fields and then we took a thorough look at the fields calculator. This time we'll be using the electrostatic solver while we practice some of our named expressions. The capacitor we'll be using is another built-in example. You can find it by making sure you're on the desktop tab, clicking Open Examples, Maxwell, General, and it'll be the only one in the electrostatic folder. Just remember to save it in another location once you open it. This capacitor uses PEC for the plates and vacuum for the dielectric. This is boring, so I'm going to make the plates aluminum and the dielectric polyethylene. Once finished, go ahead and run the simulation. A nice thing about the fields calculator is how it can help us feel confident in Maxwell's ability to provide the results that we would expect to see. Here's an example. The simulation we just ran is going to give us capacitance values already, but with the fields calculator, we can verify that the values or the order of magnitudes are accurate. We'll do this by creating a named expression that manually evaluates the capacitance using the simple formula that we all have memorized and definitely didn't need to look up. We'll start by finding the values for permittivity, area, and distance, and creating variables in the field calculator. Starting with permittivity, this is just in the materials properties box. Next, I'll go ahead and use the measure tool to find the distance between the two plates. And finally, I'll create a planar non-model object for the area. We're now ready to start working in the field calculator. Let's open it up. I think the first named expression that we should make just to make everything down the line a little bit easier is the scalar version of our geometry element, similar to how we did in the previous video. So if you'll recall, we need to first create a value, a scalar with the value of one, and then we can pull in our geometry, which in this case is the non-model object that I named area. And then we're going to integrate this. So if you evaluate it, you can see that this is the area that we need. I'm gonna pop that off the stack and we're gonna save this, add, we're gonna name it just A and click okay, A okay. And now you'll notice that it's at the bottom of our named expressions list. So next, let's just work out that numerator. We'll go ahead and pull in constant, epsilon not, and we're gonna pull in function is where all of the project variables that you've created are gonna be. So for me, that's this ER, and I'll multiply them together. Next up, the area. I. We have this up here at the top as the named expressions. Gonna click copy to stack and again, multiply. Next, we need to give, let's see, function again, the distance. We're now ready to click divide. If you'll recall, this is going to divide the second register by the first register, which is what we want. And let's evaluate this to see where we're at. 1.245 times 10 to the minus 11. So this is 12.451 picofarads. Let's now compare this against the results. And 12.451 picofarads. This is great, but let's say we aren't quite convinced. We want to know if Maxwell can handle multiple dielectrics, either split vertically or stacked on top of each other. We can verify this just as easily. We'll start by, once again, simply recalling the equations. We are, after all, studious engineers who still have each of these equations memorized, but I'll display them in the corner just in case. So I'll start by um, finding another dielectric for, for our project, and then I'll spare you having to watch every single step while I split these two dielectrics down the middle, both length and width-wise. After solving the two new models, we're ready to open up our field calculator again. We already have A, I'm gonna copy this to the stack and multiply it by epsilon naught. And of course, divide it by our distance. At this point, uh, we can check 
if this makes sense. Yeah, I'd say it does. 5.53 picofarads. This is the just basic capacitance value when there's no dielectric presence. We need this for both of the equations we're going to be using. So I'm going to save this as a named expression. I'm going to pop off our eval and click add and call it C0. After solving the two new models, we're ready to open up our field calculator again. We already have A. I'm going to copy this to the stack and multiply it by epsilon naught. And of course, divide it by our distance. At this point, uh, we can check if this makes sense. Yeah, I'd say it does. 5.53. Picofarads, this is the just basic capacitance value when there's no dielectric presence. We need this for both of the equations we're going to be using. So I'm going to save this as a named expression. I'm going to pop off our eval and click add and call it C0. The last thing we need to do for this simulation with the, the split dielectrics is multiply this value of C0 by the average of the two dielectric constants. So function has both of them, ER1, ER2. We need to sum these together and divide by 2. Grab a scale with the value 2, divide. We'll check this real fast. Looks right. Pop that off the stack, add in C0 and multiply. And we're left with 18.123 picofarads. Let's check this. 18.123 picofarads. Nice. We'll repeat that exact same process over here with the with the split dielectric. Or sorry, the stacked dielectrics. We just did the split. There we are. Open up the field calculator. We already have C0. So what we're going to start with. Const or sorry, function. Here's our ER1, our ER2. We need to multiply these together and then multiply those by 2. Now we need ER1 and ER2. Add those together. And we need to divide the or you know those from our first value. Now let's check this out. Evaluate. That looks right to me. Gonna pop that off, add in our C0 and multiply. Evaluate that. We have one, we have 16.34 picofarads. Let's check that out. 16.348 picofarads. 16.348. Nice. To show you how you can use named expressions outside of the field calculator, we're going to use this. Let's grab this named expression. So I'm going to pop the evaluation off the stack and add this. We'll call this CT as in C theoretical. Click OK. And it has been added to our named expressions. We're ready to use it. Click Done. I'm going to use our new named expression in a parametric analysis. The idea here is I want to plot CT when I sweep, in this instance, the value of our second dielectric primitivity over a wide range of numbers, and I want to, you know, graph that CT and watch it change. So let me start this, this parametric analysis. And with that simulation complete, we're now ready to plot this. So I'm going to come to results and create a fields report, rectangular plot, and my CT is ready for us. Um, I didn't sweep ER1, I swept ER2, and we're good. Let's plot this. And what we can see here is a graph of our theoretical capacitance as we sweep one of our um, primitivity values. So. This is how you plot one of your own named expressions. We used lots of named expressions, you know, in the process of getting here. I hope that this is helpful. I hope that you have a better handle on how to use named expressions, how to create them, and a better handle on just the fields calculator in general now. I'm going to put out one more video on the fields calculator that covers the transient solvers. 
So make sure you're subscribed for that. And then we're going to move on to some more exciting topics. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Ian from Ozen Engineering. And I'll catch you next time.